Hi, I want to share something from the Living Word. And this is the scriptures, the Bible. It's everlasting. These words are everlasting from beginning to the end of time, from Genesis to Revelation. And if we spend the time in the Living Word, then we get to know God. He can speak to us and He can comfort us in our times of need or in our time gives us joy when we have joy when we're sorrowful we understand we can read in here and he speaks to us it's the way he can speak to us that living word you know in 1 John 1 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so or is God I don't have it up so look it up but I'm looking at 2 Corinthians 1 verses uh, 3 through 5 I'm gonna read but here this is Paul and Timothy writing to the church in Corinth and it says here um, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ First, giving praise. The Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. It is He who comforts us in our troubles. Okay. Who? God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> comforts us in all our troubles. But why? So we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So what's that saying here? It's almost like if the glass is empty, if your glass is empty, you can't help fill up other glasses, can you? So if you have a family member or loved one, a friend, or see someone in the street, you have nothing left inside of you to give. This is what I feel like it's saying. So we need to embrace ourselves in the living word so that we can be refreshed in the Holy Spirit daily. And then God provides our comfort in our times of trouble through his living word, through his word, that everlasting living word into our spirit. Why? What, what are we here for? Are we here for ourselves selfishly? Do we have a purpose in life? Are we just to take care of ourselves, ignore everybody else, step over the body that just fell in front of us in New York City? No, so we can comfort those in any trouble, right? We're here for that. That's what the Lord, that is right there, the compassion that Jesus Christ had and he tried to show us while he was here in the flesh walking on the earth. He wasn't here for himself. He came here for us. And that is our role model, I would say, is that we are also, if we are His, then this should be our desires as well. But you know, if our glass is empty, how can we comfort others? Right? Our sh shoulders are down, tears are flowing out of our face. Now I know, we do have sad times, and then that's the time we need to be comforted by the brethren. But we need to refill up our glasses. We need to stay strong and stand firm and run the race. This is one way we need to be able to comfort those in trouble. But with what? With the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Now, I can imagine, you know, I don't have, obviously, a lot of viewers 
and I just keep going because I have things to say and blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, I probably bet that there's not one of you who are listening who have not been comforted from God. And I feel like in my own personal life, it's my experiences with the Father that is comforting that I can share with others. Like that rhema word from reading the living word, right? Then I can take what he shares with me to share with others around me and also here on my videos. And it says here in verse 5, For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Right? That's the only comfort we have. It's the only real hope we have. Nobody else, not in our jobs, not in the money we make, not in whether we have a big screen TV or the big brand new Mercedes-Benz SUV, right? Really, that comfort abounds through Christ. So if we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation, right? That's where we learn the comfort and compassion. Sorry, my earplugs keep falling out. That's where we learn the compassion of the Father. That's where we get to know Him. Sometimes we have to get dis distressed because that's when we're quiet enough to listen and to pray. That's just the way we are, right? It's nature. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort. Do you get that? Like, there have been so many times I've needed comforting, and it was the Lord that comforted me. He came to the rescue full of compassion and love. So many times I, like, would, it would take an hour for me to share with you my experiences. But it produces in you patient endurance, doesn't it? It helps grow our faith in Him of the same things, whoop, of the same things we suffer. So you know that Paul, the apostle, suffered greatly. He, he was always stoned and persecuted, chained and bound, kicked out of towns, hungry. People weren't giving him tithes or donations. He had to sell tents. He had to go around and be a, a businessman to get from city to city, right, to share the gospel. But he had to make his own money the whole way. It wasn't easy. Okay, you know, his end, all the apostles were, were killed except for the apostle John. And uh, so he's the one to, to, to say, talk about this, isn't he? From his own experience, which he is sharing with us, which then we should pass on to others. So here then he encourages, and our hope for you is firm, because we know just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. So this is really awesome. You can have an empty glass. And how to fill that glass is through our sufferings of Christ and His comfort. Just thought I'd share that with you, the living word. Have hope. Be happy. God bless.